Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with Wakanda, for real. Like, I know we had a little deep conversation about it last time, but like, I'm ready to go back. It's not gone. Like, the the yeah. high, the excitement, it's mm-hmm. not gone. I'm ready to go back. Again. I said that in the middle of class one time. I was like, I'm ready to go back to La- La- Wakanda. And they were like, you talking about Black Panther still? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I want to be able to see it again. It was good. I watched it. I cried harder when Killamonger died. You cried? Time. I'm the crier. You cried in Black Panther? I cried in movie too. I'm a Black movie. Panther now? I did. Why do you keep repeating? <laughs> what part? When Killamonger didn't want to live at the end. Oh. I cried the first time, then I cried harder the second time. Harder? Harder. <laughs> Look, another one on X Missy. See, he was over there bragging about titanium vibranium nails. And now, <laughs> speaking of Wakanda, okay, so this, I don't know what section this will be in. Anyways, did you see the video of Ron Clark Academy, how they recreated Wakanda? I know. That's a whole other topic. And I'm actually going to go see him speak next week at the Science Teacher Conference in Atlanta, which I will share all about what I felt about that at the teacher talk that we do the next time but anyways they did and I, this is probably the first time I was impressed impressed <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it and I scrolled past it and I was like no Sharifa doesn't like this people tagged me like four times I was like let me see what, what's going on in Wakanda at the Ron Clark Academy they brought in African dancers they had drum lessons and drum making classes for the boys they had spoken word for the girls this is the entire school they had vibranium titanium lessons in science class they had bead work in math and geometric shapes that you can make with beads they had um african catering from a nigerian local catering company came in and fed the whole school they had a like a step African stomp class, like you know, South Africans do the step, and that's mm-hmm. where you know the Greek step came from. So they had the Divine Nine Greek came in and taught a, taught a um, step show thing. Like it was super. Like I want to work there. <laughs> like I want to recreate Wakanda in my class, but I don't have that kind of funding that Ron Clark has, and I don't have the clientele. And we'll leave it at that. But it was nice. You should watch it. They had an African storyteller from Atlanta. Atlanta has so many like resources, resources that yeah. you can pull in if there's like money to do I it. Like and they, time. I think that there are, I don't know, some, and this might be some hateration. <laughs> I just don't think so. But my, I, there's this guy in town called named Gerald Bird, mm-hmm. and he had African drummers at our junior high at the junior high school when I taught, mm-hmm. and he's had the steppers come. It wasn't all in one big shebang, but right. like they basically over time they did. He's done almost everything that you listed except the food mm-hmm. and the titanium and vibranium. But well, I think the fact that they did it all in one day and it was like a pause on traditional education and let's just everybody do this instead of like. Here's our Black History program, you know, whatever, like that. So it was like they got experience. But from I guess the I'm not just really end. just like, ooh, because I feel like any school could really do that. Like, I don't Yeah, think, if you I have think, all the buy in. Right. I think that it can happen. I don't care if it's buy in or not, you're going to do it. You're going to bring the kids to see it. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, if, it's, if there's nothing wrong with it, why are you kicking back and let's just. Let's move forward because this is what we're doing. We know why. Well, I know why it wouldn't happen in my school. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> um, there's a lot of moving parts. And even if that's thought through, then there's always a question about losing class time. Gotcha. And it's like, we're losing class time for what? For what? For what? For what? Like, that is the, the major. Or the admin. Probably not the admin. It's probably the teacher mm. or the outside county who's looking at this school trying to do all these things. And it's like, well, what about the test scores? Because this score, Ugh. this class, this school score super low. They have time to make Wakanda. <laughs> like, I would suggest doing these test taking skills instead. Like, 
I see what you're saying. So, although we have a lot of, like, project-based learning activities, and that's, like, yeah. the goal of the school, I don't see shutting down the whole school and turning it into Wakanda for the day. I believe your unwashed brain could probably figure out a way to do it. Um, I could do it in my own room. Do a cross-curricular <laughs> project activity mm-hmm. that could be culminating at the end of a semester that could be created. Oh, yeah. I think it could be done. I yeah, mean, we could take done. a lot. Would it take a lot to pull off? He, now, what is impressive is how much he pulled off in a short amount of time. Because, like, I was feel he like building? Like, how long have he been planning that? Or was it, ooh, we saw the movie, or we... Or was it he? Or was it just the teacher who was speaking? Like, he wasn't even very tall. So it was basically this lovely, beautiful black woman who was discussing, like, how it happened. So I think that's the part that I really was liking, was, like, they talked, the teachers were talking. It wasn't um, focused on that one person. So... Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, that that was good. The teachers have the buy-in, and that's what I appreciated was oh, the entire the way school. way did they get that buy-in, though? Well. And Ryan Clark, you can't have a help, you can't have a wife, and you can't have a family. Uh-uh. Like, Ryan Clark has to be your, your everything. And, and Kim is like that, too. Yeah, he, um, he was talking about that on some video. Well, I will hear him next week, and I will share what I felt about that. Because I didn't even, I mean. He spoke at my cousin's conference. Oh, yeah? The very first one I went to. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you know, um, Oprah, if you're listening, I would love to have funding to do something like that. Because she's funny. She spoke at their gala. That's why I was like, mm. at the Ron Clark Gala. You know what I mean? I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Why are you looking like that? I'm not passionate about this topic. Okay. Um, so that was the Wakanda that I was impressed with that they recreated. And the kids were able to, like, really, they looked the kids. I did. saw a little bitty piece of it. I not the when they danced because they were going to see the movie on the table. I don't appreciate, I don't appreciate that. But the actual, like, educational Experience. part of it, I was like, okay, that's cool. It is, but okay, so it accidentally, my brain just keeps jumping to this, so I just feel like I got to say it out loud, and then we can move on. Mm-hmm. I just feel like, for I hate it, but for some reason, and I know what the reason is, all the pressure and stuff, and I says, I get it, and looking at the numbers all the time, but I feel <clears> like <throat> we could still incorporate some of that Mm-hmm. Fun creativity in oh, the yeah. classrooms, but a lot of teachers don't. No, they just don't like, and I don't know how to give people permission to do it. Like, my principal mm-hmm. tells everybody all the time, Have fun, have fun. I said, But I told her, Finally, I said, The teachers don't know what you mean by that. Mm-hmm. Like, do you mean have fun by playing video games? Do you mean have fun mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. like doing gold needle? Right. <laughs> what do you mean by have fun? Right. I said the teachers don't understand what that means. And mm-hmm. see, that Wakanda experience that you just um, kind of reviewed, that sounds like fun, but they were learning there too. There was learning involved. It's not so, just a popcorn party where you eat popcorn. Right. And that's so fun. I think that's what is happening with our public education. I really feel like it's about the creativity of the teacher as well. So if you don't know what fun is or your idea of fun, then you're, that means you're not a creative person and you're just sitting up there doing these lesson plans that were passed on to you. Like, you're not creating stuff. Right. And that's, a you know, who are we to tell <laughs> a teacher get creative when they don't even, if they're not creative, that's yeah. or they're not trying to be creative. They're just trying to teach. Yeah. Like, and Girl. fun could look so many different ways. Right. So I just. Girl, I, my kids told me taking the verbal test was fun. So, be, like. Just because it wasn't paper pencil. It was something different yeah. and it was something challenging, but they still enjoyed Like, they were loving it. So Sometimes it's just a matter of switching it up. Yeah. So, it doesn't, like, it, what, 
It's so much. This is so much teacher talk that it is definitely something. You started it. I know. Well, since we're talking about like, well, let's go into the elephant in the room, which is um hygiene. <laughs> you had to flip the script now, real hard. You know, when they're in the classroom, when there are girls who have body odor problems or boys, I tend to address the girls sooner than I do the boys. Do you? Nope. No. I address all of them because one little boy sitting up in my office and just <laughs> fumigating the whole thing. Uh, I'm yawn. I said, hey. <laughs> Hey, don't wear that shirt no more. Come on, we about to go to this little the closet. Shirt. <laughs> the whole shirt. Throw, Throw the out. whole shirt away. Throw out the shirt. <laughs> Girls, one of those little muscle ones. You know what I'm talking about? The, um, that traps the must. It traps it in there. Man. And I told him not to wear that no more, but he wore it the following week. Like, I made him take it out. And it stays, even if you wash it and soak it. Maybe if you use vinegar. It comes yeah, out. The apple cider vinegar. Yeah. That could clear everything up. But besides that, your mom's not doing that. It's just a bunch. Girl, I took that joker to the dog on the nurse's <laughs> office, got him some soap and some deodorant, told him to go in that little private bathroom to take a wash off. Oh. And he, he put on that fresh deodorant. And I said, How you run around here trying to talk about you getting girlfriends and over here musty? And I told him. Oh. Talking about girlfriends. Yeah. Musty. Was, yeah. You know, some people are attracted to musty. Who? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I have been, I've, I've had more body odor conversations with girls than I have boys. Really? Because I feel like boys, like. They supposed to stay. Whatever. Like, maybe you were hooping too hard in PE and oop, you oop. never put deodorant on. You musty early in the morning. But it's like, ugh, boys. But if it's a girl, I feel like I need to pull you aside and as a woman be like, listen. Can I please tell you what my pep talk has been with, with my daughter? <laughs> because, you know, we're transitioning into must. Must, yeah. I, yes. I know. And I've been just emphasizing to her about putting on deodorant after she's taking baths and like to rinse the soap from underneath her arm because... Keeping oh. it there makes you stinky too. Like, oh, come on, rinse that out. Because I think she thought, oh, I put the other on there. Yes. And I'm like, no, that makes you stinky mm. too. Maybe that's what Missy's doing. Girl. Well, so, Missy says, I put the other on after my shower at night. But doesn't really And won't in, in the, the morning because she's like, I already put it on. And I'm like, that doesn't, you have to do both. both. Yes. So oh. finally, the thing that got through the end. Ansley was. I said, "Do you want to smell like trash or candy?" I said, "You smell smell. Girls are supposed to smell sweet like candy, <laughs> not stinky like trash." Which one you, <laughs> which one you want to do? <laughs> and it finally got to her. Like a trash can. And she was stinky one day. I said, "You tell me, what do you smell like?" She said, "Trash." <laughs> I said, right. So My go problem and is when they dirt. don't smell themselves. Like, you should be so bothered by that smell. It's right <laughs> under your nose. All you have to do is twist your head to the side, and you can smell it. Well, one day after school, I said, God, dog, girl, I know all your friends don't smell you today. Right. Because I'm You're like. You're the first one to smell yourself. You hit me real hard with it. Girl, I'm not even going to talk about that boy, because he's got. His own. <laughs> He's got his own. But when I tell you I went in her room and I said, the whole room is filled with this smell? Girl, the whole room away. The whole <laughs> house. She, and then she had the nerve to try to defend the fact that she did wash herself and put deodorant on. And I was like, it doesn't matter. You can defend all day long. The truth is, you smell like me, us. What this nose is saying. Right. So I'm like, it don't wore off, boo. <laughs> right. So if you're convincing me that you did do this, then I need to take you to the emergency room because <laughs> there's no <laughs> reason. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> there's no reason. <laughs> Doctor, please put an IV in her arm. <laughs> <laughs> I 